Pain Lab Code Agents, yeah. we've got Mike Perna with us today, and we're going to be talking about steps to expansion. He's all over Michigan, and a quick intro to who he is. He's had a team since the year 2000, Y2K, if everybody remembers that, and oh, yeah. he, he focuses all around Detroit. He's got his expansion teams all around there within about a two to three hour drive. And I love how he's focused in on this area. And to top it all off, he's got over 700 reviews on Zillow, which is insane. Uh, 732 Mike, as of this morning. Oh, 732, but who's counting, dude? <laughs> nobody's counting, no, nobody's no, counting. I, I'm pretty yeah. sure. No, nobody watches it every day and hits refresh, just me. <laughs> just me. <laughs> and it's on a big screen when you walk into the office. Absolutely. You know it. I love it, dude. Well, welcome to Lab Code Agents. Uh, we've been watching you from afar. Glad to have you on, man. So let's get into this with the steps to expansion. I, I want to start with when did you decide to expand? Now, great question. So, when I, as I, because right during the down market, as I was a solo agent, I, I switched from more of a referral based business to an expired based business. So I really prospected the expires for sub owners, um, the distressed sales, the, sh the short sales, that kind of a person. But that also took me very wide to where at any point in time, I had listings in eight or even nine counties, um, right. which was great. I mean, it, 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 it kept me afloat. It moved me forward during the down market. Uh, we doubled and doubled again our business. Um, as the market started uh, uh, getting better, we contracted back into Novi, Michigan which is a north uh, northwestern suburb of metro detroit wait wait yeah i know novi you were the you uh, you've been there you've Dude, been to novi before i got to novi yeah. i googled what's there to do in novi and and the second the second um section here that shows on google it says novi is considered the most boring town in the united states no <laughs> yes. no seriously yes. come on <laughs> And oh. obviously you're not boring, oh, so a, dude, that must be wrong. Sad day. It's a sad, sad day for Novi. Wow. wow. <laughs> but dude, it's, I would yeah. I would go well, all over that. I'd be like, yeah. this is the most boring town in the United mm. States. Make a big deal of it. I think I'm gonna have to. But it's well, we're also the number nine, according to the New York Times, visit the place in the uh, places to visit in the US this year. Because it's so quiet and peaceful. It is. That's it is. probably I mean, I mean, they're so boring there. That they had to had to like the name for Novi was created because it's the number six stop on the of the train station outside of Detroit. Oh, N O V I. Oh my gosh, that's how. All right. Is. Yeah, I love that. Well, yeah. continue with your story. I'm sorry, I just yeah, had to. You're end super that. exciting. You're good. You're good. <laughs> um, but then uh, as, as time went on. A lot of the people whose homes that I sold at a distance, just trying to stay afloat, they started coming back and saying, okay, we need to resell the homes that we bought, rebought from you, Mike. We need to make it the next move. We need to do this. We need to do that, which was, which was fine. So around 40% of my business took me up towards that uh, Troy, Rochester, Oakland Township area. And from Novi, that's around an hour and a half drive with traffic, uh, an hour drive without traffic, which is, it, it's pushing it. To, if, if, we're, if we're getting out there to show a couple of homes or do a listing. Makes that sense. was the point where I started saying, okay, I've got the business there organically. I need to start getting a couple of agents inside that market, right? Because what I was doing was I was struggling getting my agents in Novi, Farmington, Livonia, Plymouth, Canton, those communities there on the west side of Metro Detroit. As the business kept going up, there were fewer and fewer of my agents willing to drive that, that, that distance. So effectively, I just reached into the market and started hiring into that that Keller Williams Market Center. And yeah. what was what was the biggest challenge when you're trying to hire to to a team? What did you find that to be? Oh my gosh! I think the number one challenge was the culture disconnect. Like looking back in time, I mean, we had an administrative disconnect. Sure, we had a, a lead generation disconnect as far as how we even just got our leads to people. We had to completely revamp that. And I'll talk about both of those things. But I think the number one Number one thing we had, and we still struggle with this today, is sometimes the agents that are not in the hub feel like they're on an island. You know, in the hub, I have my administrative group, I have my inside sales group. So no matter what, there's always eight to ten people in the office every day, all day. 
you know, when I, when I'm in Royal Oak right now, I have three agents in Royal Oak as an example, you know, that's it. You know, at any one point in time, there might be one agent in, but it can, it can get a little lonely. So that's been a real big struggle for us is bringing those guys back in culturally. I think that's probably a struggle for a lot of companies that are coming up now with, with, with a lot of virtual offices, obviously EXP is definitely having that issue too. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, we've yeah. been having that issue for a long time with teams and that's why we decided to kind of do the same thing you're do doing, which is keep them, keep them together. So I'm out of Ventura County, uh, Los mm -hmm. Angeles. So we just expand instead of expanding everywhere. Cause I tried Hawaii. I tried, <laughs> I tried different places. Dude, that's fantastic. Um, I'm like, you know what? They ain't working the same way. That culture is, is missing. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I try to keep it closer together now. And um, that's where we're at. So tell me, besides this, this challenge, which I think is a massive challenge, by the way, how is it that you go about hiring agents? Where do you find them? And how do you say, yeah. hey, be part of my team? No, and that's a great question. So there, there are four avenues we've really buckled down on hiring. Um, my number one, I know this is going to sound like an odd one. And, you know, I mean, it's not 1998 anymore, but I still use it. It's Craigslist. Um, you know, I post every Monday and every Friday looking for real estate agents right into Craigslist. I know it costs 35 wow. bucks. That's fine. Uh, at least in my area, they decided to put a charge on uh, on hiring ads, which actually it helps me quite a bit because it really weeds down. It weeds out a lot of the brokers. It weeds out a lot of the, the other teams because they don't want to pay it. But I, I would say about 30% of my agents are coming from Craigslist. Right no now. way. Yeah. So you just post up an ad and you're like, hey, we're hiring at this team, at this uh, and that's area. it. Yep. I've got spots for two great agents. We provide administrative assistance, education training, um, and then leads and, and preset appointments. You know, raise your hand if you want to make 60 to 100 a year, first year in real estate. That's All it. Right. That's, the, that's pretty much the entire ad. You know, I just had a, had a fantastic person apply on that, uh, Matt, on my team. Um, you know, he joined us in March and he just took off like a firecracker. I think he's, he's already at 17 or 18 closings and he's got another six or seven endings. I mean, it, it does work. Craigslist actually can bring you some oh. talented folk. Dude, I'm going to go yeah. do that right after we hang up. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't tried Craigslist in a long time. I know. Right. I mean, it's been like a, like a decade since we've even talked about Craigslist, but it's a real thing. That's, it that's is. So good. All right. So just for yeah. everybody listening in right now. Um, I'm interviewing Michael Perna and, or Mike Perna, sorry, you go by Mike. Mike. Either. Either. And we're going to start at the very beginning. So we asked him why he started this, when he started this, and now how he's hiring. And we're going to get to the end, but in steps. So yeah. uh, next, so we know you use Craigslist. I, I usually have our, I'm part of Keller Williams too. So I have our mm -hmm. team here. I just let them know, hey. Uh, we're hiring. So anybody you interview, just throw them my way, right? And then we also let our team members know we're hiring. If you have friends that are similar in character to you, because, you know, character is super important, right? Culture, same yeah. thing. Uh, we do the same thing. So now after you, you say, okay, the ads out there, everybody's talking. Some people want to join the team. What do you do for the interview? Do you talk to them on the phone first? Do they meet you in person first? Do you do group interviews? What is it like? Tell me. No, that's a great question. So, and, and uh, just backtracking a little bit, those are our number three and four uh, places to find recruits as well. The team leaders and then sourcing directly from our team and our past clients, you know, referrals, whether it's a real estate referral or, you know, a, a, a talent referral. I mean, they're both equally great in my world. At least, All right. um, past clients love it as well. They love getting that call because it's not the typical, who do you know that I should know the thing about buyers own real estate. It's a, Hey, you know, I've got a great opportunity because of folk like you who are so loyal to us through the years. We need another great person just like you. You know, I bet it's considered a career in real estate. Dude, that is another great reason to call your past clients or sphere. Absolutely. And it doubles yeah. down and, and it, it affects two things at the same time. That is so good. I, I actually, I feel like an idiot for not thinking of that before, but that's a great reason to call. Dude, I'd say do it, you know, and, and uh, Craig Rieger, a little bit north of you up in uh, Portland told me to do that. And, and I got three awesome people and hired two out of that. Um, you know, credit where credit is due. He, he tuned me into that years ago, but it's a great sphere call because you're getting back in front of them, but it's something different and you're showing gratitude for the relationship because it's because of them. 
were doing so well. Wow. Okay. And we want great people just like them. Dude, good one. Good one. I love it. All right. So now we've got the places that you look for to hire. Now what happens yeah. in the interview process? Tell me about that. Sure. So right now it's taken me about 48 uh, resumes to get to one actual hire. Oh, so I, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a little picky. I'm a little picky. Um, I mean, especially when it comes to, it comes to the, the folks that don't have a lot of sales experience, I get a little more picky, but you know, starting right with raw resumes or raw, raw applicants sounding horrible. But the first thing I look at is the grammar on the resume. Perfect. Well, I would but just cause I'm a grammar Nazi. Yeah. I would totally fail if that was the case. <laughs> Mark, come on. I'm sure you do all right. Dude, yeah. I was in law school and um, so second year into law school, the professor comes up, uh, it goes through the final exams and he says, you know what? There's a student who misspelled breach on every single page of the exam and he's showing it because um, there's no names, we're all numbers. And yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that that student is not here anymore because there's no way that somebody misspells breach that many times he goes i passed him on the exam because it was really great but um unbelievable how this person and that was me i was making fun of the guy i was like ah breach and then i look i was like oh shit i misspelled breach that was yeah. me. that's awesome that's awesome yeah yeah uh, grammar yeah but i'll say you know you know grammar uh job history length of time at a specific job if we, if, we, if i've got a job hopper that's been in six or seven different places over to over eight or nine years that's a huge red flag for me Oh, that's um, that's a huge one. I mean, those go straight to the bottom of my list because there's only a finite amount of time I can call. So I kind of rank, you know, rank them as I go. And I never, ever make it to the bottom. So out of 48, I generally call around 20. I usually scrap around 28 out of the 20. I'll maybe have three in and then make one higher. Wow. Simple enough. That. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Perfect. Now on the screening interview, when I call them, oh, go ahead. Yeah, that was my question, the screening interview. Awesome. Yeah, so on the screening interview, it's a pretty simple conversation. So I use uh, uh, Gary Keller's six personal perspectives, and I have it as a cheat sheet next to me, and I'm looking to hear at least three of the six things on that sheet. So there's um, you know self-mastery, 80-20 rule, E to P, learning based accountability and the one I can never remember. Uh, do you know that one, Tristan? No, I know, buddy. This is honestly, all I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm looking for them to describe to me something where they move from E to P, right. Where they move from entrepreneurial to purposeful, where, you know, there's a situation where there was a lot happening in a previous job and they had to stay in their 20 to have the greatest effect if they were overwhelmed or had too, uh, too high of a workload and what process they used to determine what their 20 was and how they stayed in it, right? Moving to self-mastery over, you know, and a lot of it I look for is time blocking in their day, right? How do they structure the day? What, what is their daily routine? What's their daily routine with their family? Those types of things matter, right? Because those habits that they've learned before, I mean, if they don't have great habits walking in the door, it's incredibly hard to train that back into them. Um, I love that, dude. So you're yeah, looking and learning for, based. You're looking yeah. primarily for a uh, type of mindset. So uh, I'm not sure yes. if you know Carol Dweck's book on mindset. You've got the fixed mindset, mm -hmm. the growth mindset. You're looking for growth mindset. Absolutely. Right? So 100%. Growth, growth yeah. mindset, character, good habits. Um, those are things that are really are more challenging to change in a person, right? Yeah. Than teaching them how to pick up a phone and, and trying to convert, right? So I got and you. And that's it. And that's it. And so right. once I hear three of the six, if I hear three of the six, then I'm bringing them in for an in-office interview. Because if three of them are there, four or five of them are probably there. And whatever the sixth one is, I could probably train into it. Um, once do, I hear the three, oh, go ahead. Do you sit down and interview or is it somebody else on the team that does that? Uh, right now I'm doing the interviews. Okay. Yeah, not all of them, but probably 75% of them. All right, cool. Yeah, and then I have a leadership group uh, between Vesta, Austin, and myself that – that we can all step in and we're all trained on how to interview you know, what we're looking for. Um, the last thing I look for on the phone, um, and again, this just goes to it, to a mindset and, and an attitude problem, or not problem, but opportunity. Um, I asked them about their previous two employers, one at a time, 
And this is something I've more recently added in. And just, okay, well, I see that you worked here last. Tell me about it. What were the, what were the best two things about it? What were the two things that could have been improved on at that, at that place? And what I'm looking for is, because I've had this, I've, I've made this mistake before where I've heard it, but ignored, ignored the fire alarm. I'm looking to see how they treat their previous employer, respect, gratitude, um, you know, positivity, or if they're just straight throwing them under the bus. Got it. You know, what I found is, is, you know, they'll, they might throw one employer under the bus a little bit, but not two. But if they do throw two under the bus, then we're done. Because if they're going to throw them under the bus on the way out my door, uh, they're going to do the same thing to me. Dude, or while they're still with you, they're going to be bad. Or, yeah. Or, well, yeah. Then that's it. And go around me behind my back. All right. So then if they pass this and you meet them in person, or are you doing this in person? No. Now, well, and that's it. Those are over the phone. Okay. And then once those two things are taken care of, now I'm bringing them in for the actual actual in-office interview, uh, which I prefer to do um, on Tuesdays because we have our, our uh, Tuesday office meeting or sales meeting or, or whatever you want to call it which is a great show of what our culture is. Got it. And I'll tell you what, that weeds people out right there because we really do try to have a huge growth mindset, positivity. Um, you know, we like to have a lot of fun. We like to have a good time, if you will, you know, cause it is serious business and, and it, it can be a high stress, stress job. And for some people, that's not the case. They just, that's not what they're looking for. Yeah. That's and that's so okay. Funny. So in person, is it just you, your staff, your team leaders? What, what is it? Uh, you yeah. Sit? So I'll have them come sit through the team meeting, which is um, generally 15 people in person and maybe five or eight on the phone that are calling in from the expansions, let's say. Cool. Um, and then I'll take them over to the conference room and then myself and then one of my other leaders will, will A, answer all of their questions. And I always start with questions. And then lay out how we get our business and what our training program is. And again, for us, that's a big weed out because we do it. We do show them that yes, they they got to do the work. All right. You know, so doing the work the is that yeah. you, you tell them, hey, you uh, you're going to be doing this many hours a week. You're going to be calling yes. this many people. This is what it takes. If it doesn't fit, then yeah, you know what? just this isn't for you. And that's what, it. What and I go through things? our. Oh, go what ahead. are some of those truths that you tell them? Like, hey, this is how sure. Yeah, so I go through and I do it on a marker board. And I show them, okay, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Uh, applicant, how much would you like to make a year? I'll uh, we'll make a hundred grand. Fantastic. To do that on our team, you have to close this many properties, and to do that, we need to close this many properties each for our four pillars of business. Got okay? it. And one pillar is SOI, one pillar is open houses, one pillar is lead generating through our ponds. You know, our ponds provided by White Local and a couple of other lead sources. Um, and then as well, uh, ISA preset appointments. And then for each one of those, this is the success rate that we're using as a parameter. How many SOIs you get versus how many in your database? How many open houses done versus this? How many of this versus this? How many of this versus this? And then here's what each open house requires. This many circle prospect dials, this many hours doing the open house, this as far as the signs go, putting 30 up, not five. And here's all the work. And, I, and then by the time I get to the bottom, I have all the work lined out. And it's basically essentially showing 20 hours a week of lead generation is what it's showing. All right. And then if they're like, oh, this is good, or whoa, this is a lot more than I thought, right? You can see it in the yep. It's one of the two. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, you can see it in the phrase. You're right. Absolutely. Like some of them are like, We're, like I want to get out of here. This is not for me. Um, and some of them really lean into it and say, okay, this is really cool. There's a developed plan for me to earn what I want to earn. All right. You know, for a lot of people I'm finding, you know, work isn't the issue is the defined plan. Oh, dude, a hundred percent. That's so yeah. true. I think that's probably the biggest issue. At all. Yeah. Hands down. All right. So now you've given them an outline. Let's say you, you hired this one person. Yeah. And what's expected of them for, do you have like 90 days a year? What, what do you have as expectations for the person, people you hire? Yes. So we have a 90 day training program, which a lot of our agents are getting through in under 90 days right now uh, with our launch coach, Sadie. Um, and she's amazing. And she's also very hardcore. Um, she actually has her own personal hashtag, hashtag in the group. It's hashtag not mean. <laughs> okay. But she's going to hate me. If she's watching right now, I'm sorry, Sadie. I just I have to say that. it. Um, 
but she's very, very hardcore about it. You have to know your scripts. 98% is not good enough. It's got to be 100. So day one, these guys walk in and she has, she has them dump their phones. So they download the app, um, Contacts to Excel. They dump all the contacts out of their phone. We put it in the Mojo dialer. And then in the first 48 hours, they're dialing through all of their contacts multiple times, looking for four points of information from their sphere. What are those four points? Name, phone number, email, physical address. Got it. And if we're dumping their phone, their Gmail, and their Facebook, we generally have a couple of points or one point at least minimum, but we're looking to shore up all four so we could do a holistic 33 touch across all the different mediums, right? Um, or two questions. Or yeah. What are, what are you using to, to download what app or website or yeah. software? So, yeah, out of the phone, we're using Contacts to Excel. And there's a couple of different ones in, in the App Store, whether you're an iPhone user or some other, some other device that, no, there's really only iPhone. Okay, there really is. <laughs> I know, right? I, I know, 11 Pro, fantastic. Dude, Love that. It's, a, it's a wonderful thing. All right, so first 48 yeah. hours, they call their, their sphere and they use yep. Contacts to Excel. Contacts to, to Excel. Yeah. Now, once, once they, they have this list, you upload it to Mojo or they upload it to Mojo. Yep. And then they start calling and they're looking for the yep. four, or these four points, right? To make sure they have all that information. It. So once yep. all that information is there, uh, what program are you using to touch them on all these four points? For the sure. Three? Well, and, and I'll say this, once all that information is there, we're generally down one in four agents at that point. Oh, wow. They're yep. like, this isn't for me. Yep. This is not for me. I What's don't want to bug my people. I'm nervous about calling my friends and family. I'm nervous about, and it's like, okay, I want to get the hardest call, which I don't understand why that's the hardest call, but that's okay. Yeah. I want to get the hardest call out in front of them in the first 48 hours. Because I would rather them dump out in the first 48 hours than on day 70 when we get to that call. And wow. we found that that is like the one, like a lot of, a lot of the folks that I'm hiring don't have an issue talking to strangers. But one out of three, one out of four, one out of five, somewhere in that variance, they just have a real issue calling your own sphere. Dude. Wow. That's nuts. Yeah. All right. So now when they download all of their, their sphere or everybody that's on their phone, it could be people that they have no idea who, who they are too, right? So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of them are, are numbers. So we have them go through and clean it up a little bit, um, like take it out you know, the, the pizza place that they've got saved, taking out the, you know, the, their doctor, uh, Axel's, uh, that's a good one to take out. I'd, I'd highly advise. I um, want to call your Axel's. I know, right? Um, that's so funny. Yeah. 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 Uh, you yeah, know, pretty much anybody that, I mean, we're not, I'm, I'm not so stone cold that you've got to make every single dial, but I do want them to be able to call, you know, their family, their extended family, acquaintances, college friends, high school friends, whatever that might look like. Right. And at least be able to have that great conversation. Hey, Tristan, I've got some great, exciting news. Um, I joined the Perna team over with Keller Williams. Uh, they do some really awesome stuff through the year. They do some cool client events. They do some cool giveaways, some discounts, stuff like that. I wanted to check your information to be sure I had all of it correct because I wanted to make sure we got those, those items of value, discounts, and events in front of you. Got it. You know, I love that. That's right. it. It's not even a sales call. Yeah. Dude, it isn't. It's just kind of an introduction. All right, so you're done here. You yep. have one out of four remain. So now what happens with this one? No, opposite, opposite. We have three out of four remain. Oh, three one out of four, four done. All right, yep. three out of four remain. Yep. These yep. three that remain, what happens next? Uh, they become rock stars generally. <laughs> I love that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> so yeah. that's, that's so good. Um, yeah, so, so after right that. They become rock stars. Just write that down. Yeah, they become rock stars, dot, 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 generally. Yeah. Um, the best. All right. Yeah, so and then going back to your previous question, we do actually leave the contacts in Mojo, mm -hmm. and we put them in FirePoint so that uh, we're using FirePoint as our main CRM right now um, so that they go straight into YLOPO and they start getting that monthly update on their home value. Got it. Which is actually very good. It, it's one of the high points of using my local specifically is just that home valuation alone, plus the retargeting, remarketing, Whoa. bringing those sphere clients back. Yeah, Dude, go ahead. that's about to level up, man. They're about to team up with HomeBot, right? Right. So HomeBot I saw that. It's going to be so sick. Retargeting everybody with, 
with your property values. That's sick. And then, uh, I can't. That's what you do. I, I do. As soon as they announced it, I, I saw that come up on Facebook. I logged into HomeBot. I'm like, what is this thing? I need to watch it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's no, seriously, check with, check with Yalopo. You'll see like that day after that presentation within eight minutes, they had an email from me saying, what is this coming again? Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. true. All right. Three out I'm of four excited. become rock stars. Yeah. Now, so then we train them up on open houses. So we're essentially moving straight through that four pillars, right? And so they've got to do two open house shadows. Okay. Yep. So there's sphere of influence first. Then they've got to do the two open house shadows. And we do work our open houses at, at a fairly high level. You know, we do it very, very Lori Reader style, very, very Chris Suarez style, where we really, really push those. Um, you know, Lori Reader, she really took it to a next level with these open houses, with the 30 signs, with the circle prospecting, you know, with the, the massive follow up with the, with the people that walk in the door afterwards and, and that accountability, same day call, same day text, same day email, setting them up. Yep. You know, and, and frankly, it works. Um, All right. You know, so talking here. to Saria and Lori. What's next? Yep. So what's next is our lead ponds. So those are our white local Ooh. leads and pay-per-click leads. Um, wow. You know, our main uh, website is still through uh, Real Estate Webmasters, um, wow. which I got to say, they're amazing at the at the SEO side of things. And I put a lot wow. into that site. So we're getting uh, about around 450, 500 leads a month SEO from that. That's which crazy, love, dude. Love that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I do love your site. Your main site is uh, the Perna. Is it the Perna team .com? Yep. All right. Yep. Yeah, I love and that's that. a thank you. And then I'm about to reskin it. So it's gonna look it's gonna look different in about two weeks. But Not too too different. All that SEO is still there. So that's this is, and that's it. It's just gonna look yeah. super sexy. Is it gonna have your face on it? Be like, hey, I'm sexy. Oh, huge. You know, no, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> nobody wants to. I'm <laughs> um all right. now, with the site, and, and I'll talk about that for just a second. With the site. You know, we went through Novi North, basically the cities that we target, and created a neighborhood page for every single neighborhood in those cities. So I'm up to about 4,000 neighborhood pages right now. And for the most part, about 90% of the pages, if you Google that neighborhood name, we're number one. Or we're number two wow. to the association. I spent a Absolutely. lot of time on that. Northville, yeah. Novi, Farmington, yep. and Livonia, right? Yep. Yep. And those are core four cities. And if, if you go into the neighborhood themselves and just Google, you know, neighborhood name, homes for sale, you know, my site, my page, that page will come up first or second, usually to the association. Nice. But those long tail keywords really work well. They do, man. That's, that's you know, I cannot compete with homes for sale in Novi or Northville or Farmington. Yeah. Hills. I can't, I just can't compete at that level. I don't think any, I don't Apple think Brooke, you can. Yeah. No, between Zillow, Realtor.com and some of the big franchises. Just work Redfin, on those keywords hard. Redfin, yeah. yeah. There's no way. All right, so Sphere, open houses, lead ponds. What's the fourth pillar? Yep, and then the fourth one are preset ISA appointments. Oh, those are good, like the hand me, hand -me downs. Are those here. are the hand me's, yeah. But to do that, you've got to know our two presentations, our buyer presentation and our listing presentation, stone cold. And those are not easy. Those are not short. I have a lot of words. I use all those words in that presentation, but it works. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, so then they've got this all down. They've got the pillars down. Now tell me the structure of your team starting from yeah. the top all the way through. Sure. So at the top, we have our sales director and our uh, director of operations. So Austin and Vesta. And okay. they kind of co-run the team together. Yeah. And they're both involved in agent 101s as well as the ISA 101s. And then as well, we have, um, you know, both our ISA director, Mike, and then our launch coach, Sadie. Yeah. And then Sadie is actively selling and Mike is actively set up setting appointments as well. And what is Sadie? She's like your productivity coach? Yeah, yeah she's like a productivity coach, launch coach. Um, and then she is, she's also personally in production. You know, she's all 67 year old to you. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, and then we have our uh, uh, roughly 18, 20 agents. We have our admin group and our ISA group. All right, so you've got the admin groups under the ISA director and launch coach. Is that what you would say? Or... Nope, nope. Uh, the admin group falls under uh, uh, director right. of operations. Okay. Yep. 
And what can you tell me the admin group? What does that involve? Yep. So I have a listing coordinator, two closing coordinators, uh, two photographer runners, and 93 virtual assistants. You said 9-3, right? It's not actually 93. It's, okay. it's, it's like 15. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that feels like 90. It's just a lot of them. It's a lot of them. Oh, it's yeah. so good. Yeah. All right. Uh, what company yeah. do you use off VAs? Do you use a company or do you just outsource? Nope. Uh, we started with my outdesk, uh, which they, just, they did a fantastic job at that time. Um, <laughs> but since, again, just, just going back old school to Craigslist, I started posting my own ads and finding my own people. Um, so I have two left through my outdesk. And then the remainder of the other ones, about half of them came from Craigslist, and then half of them came just from referrals from our current current VA set. Which the referrals are fantastic, especially family of, of our current VAs, because they don't want to let down their own family member on the team, and they know it's an opportunity. So that's always worked, and they help with the training as well. So that, that really works out exceptionally well. All right, cool. Now, question. Your yeah. launch coach and ISA director, they're both still agents here. So... Uh, do they get a percentage of the sales? Is that how it works? They get a percentage. Okay, that's a great question. So the launch coach, they get their own sales, but then they get an override, like whatever it is that they're currently selling on whatever the current team split is. So if they sell a listing, they get what they would normally get, right? Um, but then the people in that program, they get an override for as well. Oh, nice. All right, cool. And then your sales director... She's in charge of kind of coaching, training, making sure that everybody maintains their skills at a high level, right? Raising yes. Yes. And so forth. Okay. Do they? Does she run a meeting once a week or twice a week? Yeah. Was so that? my sales director and my director of operations uh, run a Tuesday meeting. So every Tuesday, it runs between uh, thirty-five and forty-five minutes. Good update on where we're at as a company. Skill right. building. And then what the focus for the week is. Perfect. Perfect. Do you have uh, morning huddles or no? No. No. Okay, cool. And no morning huddles. Your ISA director and launch coach, they, they kind of, they're like the step between sales director and director of ops and the rest of the team, the 20. Yeah. And, and I got to be honest, they, all four of them are, are kind we of feel right. like we're all on the same level. Got it. Yeah. That's what it, that's what it felt like. So then with the team. Yeah. And we're in a, yeah, we're in a really good place with that right now. Go ahead. With the teams, are there team leaders inside of your team that help you or everybody just is under one umbrella? Under the, the sales director and director of operations as far as agents go. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That gives me a good Well, idea. you know, and, and I got to tell you one thing, and this is a, a huge shift in my business over the last, last couple of years. We used to have a requirement that everybody was in the office, button seat, dial in the phone, nine to noon every day, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Right. Every agent, every day. Right. And then over time, we just frankly got away from it. Me too. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. I felt it was just, dude, the world changed. Right. Yeah. And we weren't changing. We just, we started the whole thing yeah. with, with culture, right? Mm -hmm. how, how do we keep the culture? with with virtual settings right yeah so i mean it's uh it comes down to that well and that's it and that's not to say that that i don't have folks that they're in every day i do i mean i've got a half a dozen people that that they you know live and die by coming into the office and you can set their set your clock to them um whatever time it is they come in whatever time they leave i mean it's the same every day but it's mm. their time that they pick not my time i i pick for them um, essentially what I did was it is, I mean, this sounds horrible, but as I grew up, you know, so did, so did the team, <laughs> you know, it's such a fair, uh, way to put it because I think that's how yeah. all team leaders do it. Like, yeah, you don't realize how like, I am an, I yeah. before, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I do, I'm an adult, like I'm adulting, <laughs> like true story. Like I, I dress myself today. It was so when great. did that happen? Tell me. Uh, <laughs> Middle of March. Oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah it's a recent thing. Mom. You beat me by a month. Yeah, yeah. I think I, yeah, I have the same shoes on. Okay, we're good. Dude. Um, yeah, but it is, seriously though, I mean, it did. You know, the the 
we are not the team and, 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 you know, this is not to be offensive to anybody that is, but we're just not the team where, where we've got just, just a bunch of kind of bros hanging out and, and doing the thing. And you got to grind on them and you got to be over their shoulder and say, call this person. Did you make this dial? Did you follow? That's not us. That's Dude, not that, us. That's not me either, man. I tried that. And it's yeah. for us, it was, it was a really big challenge to sustain. Yeah. And to keep and grow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dude, the time involved with grinding on, on so many people is just correct. It, it was, was grinded it, in and of itself. Yeah, it was a big challenge. All right. So we've got we've got the interview. We've got what happens next, who stays. We've got the structure of the team. Right. And I can yep. see how how the continual guidance allows your yes. team to continually grow. I mean, dude, you've got it. You've got it down. It's pretty tight. And I can see the value, but there's an added value. And I want to talk about this. And that's where it comes down to where you mentioned here, one of your four pillars was the lead pond. And yeah. um, those are leads, right? You, you offer leads to the team. And I do. I can, you do. Tell me, can you tell me that structure and how it works? Sure. Yeah. So, and with FirePoint, it makes it really easy to run uh, run expansion because I can separate them all out geographically, which is nice. Um, so a lead comes in, goes into the lead pond. Um, at the same time, it goes into Y Lobo. So Ray is starting and all of the wonderful text messages are going, all of that stuff, right? Yeah. And then on the far side of that, conversion monster starting, they're, they're calling sequence, right? So like last, last month, we took in uh, roughly, um, I think I'm being 2,200. 2,250 leads or 2,280 leads total. And both of those things were running at the same time. And so wow. they just go right into the pounds. And right now your leads are coming yeah. primarily from Ylopa, which is Facebook lead ads and yeah. Google PPC or just one? Uh, both. So we've got, we've got Ylopa, which provides us around 12, uh, 1,300 leads a month. Uh, Real Estate Webmasters, that platform which is 450 to 500 leads a month. Uh, PPC, which is around 200 leads a month. Um, we still do some Zillow, especially in the community that we're prevalent in. Okay. Although we've largely uh, gotten off that platform. It's, it's half of what it was a year and a half ago, if not okay. less. Um, where else? I mean, Stein calls, right? Yeah, well, yeah, you sign calls that. and then Sphere calls yeah. and then referrals and all of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but then all that goes kind of outside the agent direct, more or less. Right. Um, but the so these leads go are online. Yeah, leads. correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then those leads go. They get system. You know, Raya goes on. They're doing the, the AI texting. Conversion Monster kicks in. They're doing additional phone calls for us, which is great. And then once they get, well, they don't really get through that. They're in the pond. If Conversion Monster picks them up or Raya picks them up then our ISA group pulls them out of the pond and assigns them, actually actually sets the appointment and then assigns them to an agent right on their calendar as a set appointment. Now, that said, even with, with both of those systems, 70% of those leads, we still just don't get a hold of. Yeah, that's true. Straight up. I agree. So out of 2,200 leads, I still have 1,400 sitting in there that nobody got a hold of. Yeah, well, that's why we're retargeting them through... Yep. Facebook and Instagram and eventually we'll get a hold of them. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with that. So then what do you think has been the biggest difference in your success between this year and the two previous years? Because I know, I know you, we all have ups and downs, right? You went through a yeah. little bit of a down and then you're oh, yeah. on the way back up. What's the biggest yeah. difference that, that you see? Because with a good system like this, I think you, you're able to identify it better. Yeah, no, no, and, and that and that's a good that that's a great question actually. Um, two things: one, I got super tight on my hiring. I wasn't just taking bodies anymore; just trying to fill the space. So, hiring specifically yeah. agents. Yes. Okay. And ISAs, for that matter, both of those people, both both of those two, I'm not hiring bodies, and I'm saying no. I'm saying no forty nine times to get the one yes. Got it. You know, and that was something that, that, you know, going back to, you know, a, a couple, a couple of people that I really admire, you know, Korea, Karina and Lance Loken, 
you know, it, I, I, I really mastermind with them around their hiring process. And they even go like twice as far as I do still with their hiring process. And there's three more layers to it. But I was going the opposite way where if I had 10 applicants, I'd probably hire three of them. Uh, like you're cool. I like your car. You know your shoes are your shoes are nice. Let's let's do this. <laughs> like before my hiring process was so simple. That's a great hiring yeah. process. I like that. Easy, easy to follow. Easy. Right. <laughs> I just yeah. that down. No, oh. don't write that down. Don't write that down. <laughs> just... um, yeah, yeah. Um, but then also defining. I mean, it, you know, the two other things that kind of happen concurrently is, you know, a year and a half ago or two years ago. I found myself stuck in these conversations, and this is where culture became a really big piece of it, in these conversations that were frankly just irrelevant. Just irrelevant. You know, just a gossip. Like, like this person doesn't like this person, and this person got offended by this, and this person missed this, so now we have to have this entire new set of rules and guidelines and restrictions on the agents. And, and I mean, I had a rule book like that thick of things that these guys had to do and follow and finally wow. i'm just like you know what forget all this forget all this and so i let go a couple of the agents a couple of the agents frankly self-selected out because they didn't like that i wouldn't listen to them yeah with their just general garbage if you will mm -hmm. um threw the rule book out and just said hey i'm only hiring good people that do the right thing you know i went, I went back to, to good to great my leadership group and i looked at that real real hard and you know went right to the first chapter first who then what and then right back to what Jim Collins was saying, you know, the reason why we have systems and rules and guidelines and regulations and processes is because of the B players and the C players require that structure because they won't do it on their own. But by putting that in, you're forcing the A players out. They will get out because they don't like that. And you're telling them subconsciously, I don't trust you. Yeah. Which the Bs and the Cs, we don't. Yeah, but I mean, we don't I mean I'm, I'm not even a short for that. Right? No, let's be clear. B players and C players, I do not trust. Yeah, dude, because look, you and I, you and I probably don't abide by rules. And I honestly hate Oh, rules. no, I'm a rule follower. 100%. Uh, <laughs> we live in the gray area. And, <laughs> yeah. and we're A players. And anytime you set rules yeah. and you're like, hey, you have to do it this way, this is the way I'm like, I'm out. Yeah. And yeah, so. Absolutely. That's it's a really good point from from uh, good to great. You know, you're forcing your A players out, and you're letting the C's and B's continually be average, which is not yeah, what you absolutely. Want. Yeah, no, and and I, I'll be the first to say, you know, my one of my hardest losses was um, a really young guy, Richie, who him and I actually we look we look quite a bit alike. We're both bald and, and whatnot, and darker complexion. <laughs> but to this day, I still lament that loss because he's an A player. But I, but we ruled that my leadership team at the time ruled and regulated them straight out the door, dude. I've, and now I've, he's crushing. He's crushing in the business. He's just not crushing with me. Ah, uh, you know what? The same thing happened to me three times before. So yeah, hired a UPS yeah. manager, made him a monster. I just I didn't have the structure to be able to hold on to a players at the time. Yeah. Now me neither. Still, over a hundred million and it's like my direct competition, but you know, I still like wow. him, my friend. Yeah. And um, dude, these are the people okay. who let go of. It's like, and it's my fault. Right. Yeah. So did I get you really, really good point, man. I, I love that. That's a, that's a really strong point. So then how do you, how do you envision now being able to sustain a, a pretty consistent growth with you? And look, I know, yeah. In, in, in real estate, it's going to go up and down, but at least to sustain a moderate growth or not dip as much as previously, previous years. No, that's a great question. So I think if we just continue with the, the focus on, on hiring the right people and not forcing the growth, but allowing the growth to happen as we find them. But again, putting the process in. I mean, already today, I had three calls with three different interview can candidates, and I've got two more after this. You know, as long as I can keep on the track of having three calls per day, every single day, five days a week, I'm going to have my growth because it, it just fits the, the system fits because I'll get to my 50 candidates I need every month to get my one great person who's going to affect our team, team bottom line between seven and 12 million. That's it. 
And that's all there is. I mean, now that I figured out the lead side and lead generation side, I can, I can lever that up and down. That's easy at this point. It's all finding right. the talents of people and getting them plugged in and being willing to wait for the talent to say, okay, maybe this month I have zero hires, next month zero hires, and the third month, oh my gosh, there are three talents of people. You know, the numbers will always shake out is what I'm finding. And the more I get frustrated or allow myself to get frustrated and then rush it and take a B, the more I'm just eating away and I'm going back, I'm going to go back into crash mode. The Got second it. part of that was our, our, you know, between two and a half years ago and now, the number of agents on our team has gone down, you know, by 50%. I mean, we're half the size that we used to be. Good. But we're doing more deals and our average agent production has over doubled. Dude, I love that because now, now you're creating, you've yeah. created careers for these people. Yeah. They're more appreciative. They, for the most part, will want to stay. There's always those that leave because, you know, it's normal, yeah. right? Absolutely. You know, we're, and we're, we're in a better place where, you know, even the leadership team themselves are much happier and they bring that happiness because the conversations we're having today are not, hey man, did you make this call? The conversations today, the, the conversation we're having today is, um, hey, can you help me structure this addendum? Because I, I, we got this thing negotiated, but I don't know how to write it up. Got That's it. a way different conversation. Much higher You're having it every day. Conversation. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. So then with the expansion teams that you've got all around Detroit, how yeah. do you handle that, that culture piece so that you guys remain strong? Who's in charge of that? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I am not actually Miss Vesta is definitely in charge of that. I am most definitely not. Yeah, she's short. She's fierce. She's got that stare where she goes from like, like, you know, five, four to like six, three in like two seconds. Um, I hope she's not watching. That'd be so good. That'd be, I'm in trouble. Um, but no, seriously, like they, she, she really has become like the mom of the family or the glue of the family, so to speak. And, she does a great job with two, di two different things we do every month. One is a call day. So it doesn't matter where you're at. We all drive into the hub. And that day we do call. And we, it's usually sphere calls. Sometimes it's just lead follow-up calls. Whatever it is, we have lunch. We have a good time. We do, we do some sort of a learning component. Um, usually some sort of an awards component for top earners or top, top salespeople. You know, we don't press it as hard as we could on the, hey, call, 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 call. I mean, we all definitely quadruple or even, you know, five X or six X or call that day as, an, as opposed to a normal day for sure. But it's supposed to be everybody's face-to-face, -face, you know, saying hi and checking in, hey, how are the kids? How is this going since the last one? That as well. It's as much of that as it is calling, even sure. though we call it a call day. Um, and then as well, once a month, we try to get together and really do something fun with the team. Um, you know, we went to a local haunted house last month. A uh, month before we tailgated, which was hilarious. We got out there at 10 a.m. For, uh, for a 7 p.m. football game. Um, <laughs> it, you know, that kind of thing, right? Got it. Yeah. So you you yeah. try to keep the Something. connection high. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's a good one, dude. That's a good one. All right. So then lastly, with, with the structure that you have with, with the team, because it centers around yeah. your, your main hub there, right? Where you're at, where are you located? It does. Uh, Novi is my main hub. That's right. You're at a Novi. All right. So it surrounds yeah. off of that. Is your staff all there or is the staff in different places? Yeah. Sort of. So two of my three coordinators are there. My listing coordinator and one of my closing coordinators. My third and my longest running coordinator is in uh, Castle Rock, Colorado. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Just outside of Denver. Yeah. And who keeps these um, listing coordinators, VAs, closing director, who keeps them accountable? Uh, you know, Vesta does. And those three are, are extremely high quality people. They're all very different. I will say that. And, you, and when, you, when you line them up, you don't see a lot of similarities. But the one similarity that they have is, you know, they, they love the clients and they put it out there. And then and the agents themselves, and they really put it out there every single day. They, they come to work. They do a great job. Um, I, you know, I mean, it sounds bad, but, but I mean, I, an entire quarter or a half a year will go by and I won't talk to Connie because she's just crushing it. She just nailed it. I mean, she... She's, I've been in the business, it'll be 19 years in February. 
she's been doing closing coordination for ages for 23 years. Wow. And she's closed more deals than I've closed by far, <laughs> dude, which is cool. That's, that's super cool. What's uh, with the rest of your yeah. team? What is it a normal split with all the leads that you have and their sphere or does it change? Is it like 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30? Yeah, what is it? it changes a little bit. So okay. we've got um, agent generated slash sphere or company generated slash ISA appointment. Got right. It. So they get more if they, if it's from their own sphere or an open house. Right. All right. And then, def- and then depending on if it's buyer or listing. Got it. And then they yeah. get less if it's, if it comes from your sources, like, why yep. love? Oh, okay. Got it. Yep. Perfect, man. Well, I love it. Anything else you want to add that you think I may have missed? Um, you know, one of the biggest struggles I had at the time was, was just the tech around getting the right leads to the right agents. Because before we expanded, like up into my first expansion agent, we still had floor time in the, in the office for our own team. I had one computer that all, all leads ran to. You had to be logged into one specific email that nobody had. It was just up on the screen. And the, the one phone rang next to the desk. So I ran, I ran a modified floor time, you know, for 10 years. And it worked because the volume of leads that were coming in. You know, now the tech is out there, whether it's FirePoint or follow-up boss or, you know, Lion Desk. I mean, the, the tech is there on that side. The second part is, I think as you expand, you really start getting, you really got to start getting much more particular about who you're hiring all the way around the circle. It doesn't matter if it's agents, admin, ISAs, all of it, because they really got to start working together much better from afar. And it's harder when you don't see them every day and you can't walk over. So my agents in Rochester where I look, they can't walk over to the admin and say, Hey, did you handle this? You know what I mean? Yeah, it makes it's sense. Different. How do you stay, how do you keep that communication going? Do you guys use Slack? Do you yeah. Guys, what? Uh, actually, we're still using FirePoint for it and it works out really well. So in FirePoint, all the notes go in and all the tagging happens. Um, but then anytime that there's any sort of a phone conversation with a client, not only is it done through FirePoint, so there's a recording, but my administrative assistant assistants also do an email follow-up. You know, hey, Tristan, thanks so much for the call today on the sale, on the closing of your property coming up tomorrow on what's with Main Street. Um, just wanted to recap the questions you had asked with the answer. So you have that in writing and then copy the agent on it. Dude. And then that way the agent stays involved. All right. Let me write that in, man. I, I, I like that. Um, I mean, besides the fact that this webinar is brought to you by FirePoint. So <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, it is. So it's kind of oh, cool nice. to put it all up. It's kind of nice, dude. It wasn't even. Oh, I'm sorry. I dwell. Yeah, no, no, and, and just putting this out to the Facebook world, that definitely was not planned. That was just, you know, it's been my CRM for over three years. Um, and I got to admit, they do, they crush. They do a great job. They do, they do, they, they actually do a good job. We use FirePoint for our, um, for our expansion teams. So right that helps a lot. And I'll put up a link up there as well, too, so people can see what that's about. But you combine FirePoint and Ylopo. And that allows the yeah. retargeting to happen and your whole team runs the CRM and the lead nurturing and the lead process through FirePoint, right? Yep. Yep. And now, um, you know, between that and then Conversion Monster doing a lot, a lot of those calls. That's right, dude. Fire that. You know, we've got a pretty tight system. Yeah. Nice, man. Dude, we can go like another five hours on this. Oh, dude, we can go forever. Are you kidding? Because there's still like more stuff. There's so much more stuff. We should you know, there's all the past client stuff and all the, the farming and the, and the, and the Facebook. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, we could do this again. Like, Dude, let's, um, let's yeah. do a part two and three to this. Okay. I feel like I, I, I'd love to go into the, the hiring process, number one. So that Definitely. would be like a whole webinar of its own, right? Yeah. And then your structure on exact job duties for your staff, right? And I should probably have have a marker board. You could, yeah, you know, bust out a marker board. Yeah. But we could do that probably for um, December if you've got Nice. Let's do it. Let's do it. There's one week I'm out of town with the fam, but uh, other than that, whenever whenever you've got it. So David, David Sewell says, I have to leave to show listings, but this is pure gold for, uh, for where I am. I can get a recording for this, please. Yes, we'll post it up to Lab Coats. It's already up there. And then YouTube, once we have it edited. And Definitely. We'll go from there. But 
Yeah, no, any questions, David, you know, throw them in there. I'll respond to the comments, the questions, all of it. Yeah, Anything I can help with. Reach out to Mike with any questions. And if you have yeah. any referrals, he covers, he just covers all Metro. of Michigan. You just send yeah. him all referrals. Yeah, yeah, that's easy. Let's yeah. just do that. Yeah. Anything in Michigan, I can handle. And, and that's true. Because I get a lot of people saying, hey, are you here? And I've got great referral partners there. Good that's point. Right, dude. Good point. That's right. And if you don't cover yeah. it, then you'll give it to Nick Baldwin. Right? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, no, I'll give it to him. <laughs> Is Mike here? No, he's not there. Yeah. No, he's not here. He's not here. All right. So if you have any questions on FirePoint, go to firepoint.net and whylovo.com. Yeah. I'll put up a link for the deal that we've got. But again, this webinar was brought to you by FirePoint. And thank you, Mike, for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, that was a whole hour, buddy. So thank you. That was fast. That went so fast. That was good. Yeah, we're going to need, we're going to need like another, another couple, five, six minutes. <laughs> Very good content, dude. Thank you. Appreciate cool. you, man. Thanks, Ritson. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.